We decorate our tree the same way I like to cook. It's just a starting point for experimentation and creativity. Happy holidays! Happy holidays! Let me share a secret recipe. Discover an ingredient that fires your imagination. Choose other flavors to match. Find the best way to cook them. My secret recipe? Cooking without a recipe. The greatest gift of all during Christmas or any season is time with your family. So with holiday ruckus everywhere, I'll try to get as much done in advance as I can. Your book. Do you want to go read a book with mommy? Because daddy's going to go run in the kitchen for a while, okay? See you in a while. Christmas Day is the big daddy of all dinners. A once a year go for it meal. So here's my best tip for you. Make sure you get started the night before, under the tree and in the kitchen. I am obsessed with juicy turkey. My secret, brining. I'm gonna soak it in salt water and it really works. The only thing you have to remember about brining is a very simple ratio. For every gallon of water, you need one cup of salt. It usually takes about two gallons or so to cover an average turkey. The best salt to use if you're brining is always a fine sea salt. If you have kosher salt, you can use that too, but use a little bit more of it, about a cup and a quarter or so per gallon. That's because kosher salt is not as dense as fine salt. Now there's one other ingredient you can add to a brine. It's optional, but you can also put sugar in it. White sugar, brown sugar, molasses, maple syrup, you could even use honey. I think I'll try it. Honey roast turkey. It just sounds good. There's one cup of salt and two cups of salt. That's about two cups or so of honey. And at this point, the thing to do is just grab a whisk and stir until everything dissolves. You'll know when it does. I can totally smell the honey. It smells good. Now, you know what else? You can also toss some herbs in there, some other flavors, maybe some rosemary. So I'm just gonna take a few of those, a few bunches, just drop them right in. Hey, Mr. Turkey, you ready for a moisturizing bath? I usually let my turkeys brine for at least 8 to 12 hours. It works like a champ. I'm working with raw poultry. You have to take it seriously. So, I want to keep it cold. And here's a way to do it. Standard freezer packs. And now it's going to stay cold all night. This is the single most important thing I make this time of year. Cookies for Santa. This is my mom's gold standard sugar cookie dough. It's just as simple as your mom's. There's nothing here but butter, flour, egg, sugar, and a touch of baking soda. It's simple to make and it's simple to roll out. This is actually one of the earliest kitchen memories I have helping my mom cut out the Christmas cookies. I want to add some spice flavors to these cookies because hey, this time of year a good kitchen always smells like spice. I'm going to whip up four different spice mixes. I'm going to make four different spice cookies. Who says they all have to taste the same? That'll impress Santa. And then a little bit of each one of the spices. 
So there's my allspice sugar right there. There's my cinnamon sugar. Cardamom sugar. And every time I smell this, I think of my mom and the star anise. I've got a little bit of sugar in here because the sugar will help the spice spread out evenly. So there's a bunch that are flavored with allspice. Now for the cinnamon, some cardamom, and last but not least, star anise, the licorice flavor. So I'll bake those off at 350 until they're done. 10 or 12 minutes, won't take long. Hey, Merry Christmas Eve. Gabe, come check out the cookies. I see a star. This one's for the reindeer. And that one's for Santa. You can have one, you betcha. Hey, look at that. Quiet. Who's on there? Me and you. I'll be cooking with this all day. Now that's a gift a cook can use. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Check it out. Looks like Gabe and Santa are trying to keep me in the kitchen. I love Christmas. I also love to get as much of the work done ahead of time as I possibly can. This year's free range turkey came from our friend's backyard. It's still resting in last night's moisturizing bath. It's brining comfortably with aromatic rosemary. And since I always add a bit of sugar to the brine, I decided to try something new this year, honey. Oh good, it's nice and cold in there. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So the first step is obviously to rinse this turkey. Sometimes you might end up with a little pocket of salt somewhere within the turkey, so it's a good idea to rinse it really well. Now it's a good idea when you're roasting the turkey to get it up in the pan to get more of the heat of the oven exposed to the turkey. Here's how I do it if I don't have a fancy roasting rack. Fancy carrots. Now something else to keep in mind is that not only do I have to flavor the turkey, but I've got to flavor that pan too, because later I'm going to make gravy. I'm just going to add some onion and some garlic to the works. Now for the garlic, I simply take the head and cut it in half, just like this. Now it's important to rinse the turkey well, and it's also important to dry it well, because dry skin browns better. I don't want a watery roasting pan, because that'll keep it from caramelizing and turning golden brown and roasting up nicely, and I want a golden brown turkey. Now here's another trick to help keep the breast meat nice and moist. Take your legs and figure out a way to keep them tight against the breast. You can make a nice simple cut, just like that and then take your leg and tuck it right in like that. Okay, now for my pepper. Obviously it's already got tons of salt on it. Now there's one thing missing here, check it out. Empty, no stuffing. I don't stuff my turkey. Here's what happens if you do. By the time the heat penetrates through that thick breast meat and into the center of the stuffing, you've overcooked the breast meat. And I'm all about the breast meat. I really don't care about the stuffing. I'll cook it separately in another pan. Now somewhere in here, I've got a stuffing for that turkey. I could make a polenta out of the cornmeal. I could make a barley risotto. I don't feel like rice. Actually, that leaves wheat berries. And this is exactly what you would normally make stuffing out of anyway, because this is what the wheat berry looks like when it's first harvested, before the bran is polished off, before it's ground up into flour and made into bread and then made into turkey stuffing. Perfect. Wheat berry stuffing. So for one cup of wheat berries, eight cups of water. 
Now, I don't know about your mom, but my mom always flavored her stuffing with two things. With dried fruit of some kind, and with nuts, something for a little crunch and texture. And of course, my stuffing, I always begin with a flavor base, with some onions and garlic and carrots, that sort of aromatic vegetable thing. Let's see what we have for dried fruit. Of course, raisins, perhaps the most common dried fruit of all. And, oh yeah, look at that, got some apricots. Very nice, some color, some texture there. And dried cranberries, but you know what? I've got some frozen cranberries, I'll use those. Now, for the nuts. Actually, I'm out of nuts. So, for some texture, how about some sunflower seeds? Lots of crunch in there. And oh yeah, there's one more thing my mom always puts in her stuffing. Italian sausage, which of course is flavored by fennel seed. Pot should be big enough to hold all those wheat berries and flavors. And now I want to brown some onions in it. A little splash of oil. There's some onions. I'm also going to need some carrots. Aromatic vegetables. Flavor base. I'm going to add the fennel seed whole. It's got a nice chewy texture to it and a wonderful anise licorice type flavor. And there it is, a flavor base. So, very simple. One cup of wheat berries, in they go. And eight cups of water. Oh, actually, you know, now that I think about it, the water can change too. It just needs to be liquid. As long as I hit eight cups, I'm doing fine. So. Here's some chicken broth. Boy, this is going to be some flavor right here. So at this point, all I have to do is just bring this up to the simmer, put a lid on it, turn the heat down, and let it rest comfortably until those wheat berries tenderize, which takes at least an hour. So that gives me lots of time to add some more flavor. Let's see. Dried fruit. Here we go. Some raisins my sunflower seeds and the apricots but you know the apricots are pretty big so I better cut these down just a little bit now if you look at this right now it looks like soup doesn't it but in a while those wheat berries are gonna start to absorb all that beautiful moisture they're gonna start to soften and take on this wonderful nutty flavor it's gonna be good And now I've got time to go play. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and all that jazz. I'm enjoying the greatest gift of all, time with my family. Because this is the stuff memories are made of. This time of year I'm inspired by traditional flavors like roast turkey. I actually brined this last night so its juiciness is guaranteed. I also like new flavors so this year I'm making a wheat berry stuffing. Hooey, looking good. I want to take the temperature of the turkey because that's the guaranteed way to make sure that it's not drying out, that it's not overcooked. Take a standard meat thermometer, poke that right into the thickest part of the thigh. Now I'm looking for 165 degrees. If I get 165, the turkey is perfectly roasted. Now here's another very important step when it comes to keeping this turkey juicy. We rest it, very important. Right now, because that meat just came out of the oven, all the water molecules in it, the juicy part, are all agitated. They're moving all over the place. They need time to settle down. They really need to relax. And when they do, the juice will stay in the meat. So while this rests, there's two more things I can do to make sure it stays nice and juicy. I'll make a gravy, of course, with all these beautiful drippings. And I'll make sure I have a sharp knife because a sharp knife is key to presentation and juiciness. A dull knife tears the meat and the juice just falls out. A sharp knife will help it stay juicy.
There's a certain zen to sharpening knives. Long, smooth draws across the full length of the blade and the stone, back and forth, mesmerizing. Sharpening a knife is really not that hard to do yourself. There are numerous gadgets out there, but I prefer old school, a simple water stone. As you touch up your blade, use lots of water. Every time you get ready to use it, pass it over a honing steel a few times. The steel won't sharpen the blade, but it will align and true the microscopic leading edge that tears and bends with use. With practice, you'll be able to feel and hear when your blade is sharp. Now there are three simple parts to a simple gravy. The pan itself, there's lots of flavor locked into that pan, the liquid, the base of the gravy, and however you choose to thicken it. Now when you roast a turkey or any kind of poultry, it always releases some juices. Sometimes those juices evaporate and concentrate and caramelize like that. That's called the fawn. There's actually a lot of concentrated flavor right there. Here's how you get it out of the pan. I've got some Cabernet Sauvignon, red wine. Maybe you don't have some red wine at home. Use some white wine. You could even use fruit juice. You could use chicken stock. Of course, there's a lot of flavor in red wine. I'm going to bring this up to the heat. I'm going to simmer it. I'm going to reduce that red wine down. And while that happens, it'll dissolve the fond. Now I need something to thicken the gravy. Here's how simple cornstarch is. First, dissolve it in a little bit of water. Stir that around. Now I'll add the liquid right back. Good splash of chicken broth. And as soon as that comes to a simmer, I'm ready to hit it with the cornstarch. Christmas dinner's looking good. I still have to stir the cranberries into the stuffing. My sauce is done, my gravy, the turkey's resting, and the whole kitchen smells great. When my guest arrives, she's gonna love it. Here I come, anybody home? Merry Christmas! I'm here! Nana! Oh, Gabriel! Merry Christmas! <laughs> What's that taste like? Applesauce. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Hey, we're all about to sit down to a table full of old familiar flavors and some tasty new friends. I've been planning this meal for weeks to help keep it simple. Front and center, brined, roasted, and rested turkey. It's almost prime time. Everything's on the table except the turkey. So, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to finish up my stuffing, my wheat berry stuffing, with some frozen cranberries. Just pour them right in. Stir those in. And because I'm adding these now at the last minute, they're going to keep their shape. They're quickly going to thaw out and they're going to hold their flavor. Otherwise, they would have just dissolved away into the stuffing. Just put some of this right here in the center. The fruit flavors are coming out nice. And now for the turkey. Now again, you can do this any way you care to. All you have to do is get it sliced and on the platter. That's it. Whatever method you come up with will do just fine. Here's how I do it. I begin by taking off the legs. I'm just going to slice right down in there. There we go. There's the first leg. I think I'll leave the thigh in the kitchen though. There's only four of us at the table. But I know we have some drumstick fans, so let's pull this other one right off. There's my next drumstick. Put that one down here. And now for the star of the show, the breast meat. I start by making a slice right down the center, right along that breastbone. Just work my knife down that way. So what I like to do is take off the entire breast. I don't actually slice the breast on the bird. I take it off in one big piece like this, and then I take that and slice it. Look at that. Beautiful. 
And of course that other breast is going to get sacrificed to the sandwich gods, and the carcass will get turned into turkey soup. We'll be eating it for lunch all week. You know, this holiday season, you can give your family the most precious gift of all. Give yourself, give your time, give your creative energy. Fill your family's table with some healthy new flavors and some tasty old friends. Celebrate and get somebody else to wash the dishes. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. That's some wheat yummy. berry stuffing and some juicy turkey, I guarantee. Yeah, better be. <laughs> Can you say maitre d'? Maitre d'. Hey, very good. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. You do your mom proud. Thank you very much. I learned from the best. Ah, yeah. Here's the family. <laughs> Yeah, tell Merry me that Christmas thing is juicy. Yeah. I know it's juicy. It's very juicy. Do you have fun today, Gabe? Yep. Santa here. What did we leave for Santa and the reindeer last night? Oatmeal cookies. Did you check the plate this morning? Yep. Sneaky hot some. See, do buy Santa on this side, this side. Did the reindeer eat all the oatmeal? The reindeer did. Here's to the greatest gift of all, my family. Thank you.